it's the evening before departing for Ruda Copies tomorrow, the start of the mapping of a new dam. Um, I'm going to give a little bit of a, a vlog or a vlog as they call it on the procedure and what goes into something like this. So guys, yeah, the car is basically packed. The boat itself is sitting up at um, uh, Jet Park, ready to rock and roll. So three o'clock tomorrow morning, we hit the road, or I hit the road, and uh, collect the boat, and then it's on to Brits, and then Roder copies. So uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. You'll see what goes into doing something like this. Uh, we are 208 kilometers outside of Johannesburg now. Uh, everything's smooth sailing. Uh, looks like we're pretty much on track time-wise for, for today. So uh, yeah, that's my morning vlog entry. Our last little stop for the journey before actually arriving at our, our destination. So yeah. Uh, I'll keep you posted when we get there. As you can see, it's uh, the sun is just setting now here in the northwest near Biestekral. Like I said, we're mapping Ruder copies, and uh, we've arrived at this absolutely beautiful place. The boat is there; it's ready to rock and roll. I had to do some maintenance. I had to put on a new prop, and it is that time and out in the bush make a nice bry got a couple of nice little chops for tonight Uh, what I want to show you today is the little autonomous boat. You've seen a, me launch it just now, uh, but I want to show you what does what. So here we go. Um, I've had a couple of requests for this. So um, yeah, have a look. The boat itself is essentially uh, the offcuts from that. Those are obviously three surf skis. There's two carbon fiber skis on the outside. Those are single kayaks and the center one is your double, uh, what do they call it, a K2, no not the K2, anyway, it's a two-man ski, you can see that's the piece that was cut off the back, is the main hole here, and then the a section of the tail of those other two holes are there. Uh, you'll see it's got the aluminium strut across there, that flexes on purpose, you don't want a rigid hole. So we, we've got that. We've got a Lawrence Elite TI taking care of the sonar and the, and the GPS. Yes, we use a MRP66 as a transducer because of the very small cone angle 
on the 200 kilohertz. We use, um, in that box there, there's your GPS. There's two GPS's inside there and two compasses. Um, it's a, essentially a flight controller. Um, uh, this box here, this massive big box with the steering arm on here and all that. This is essentially, uh, you know, those little radio control boat, uh, or boats and cars. You have that tiny little servo motor. All of this inside here is essentially one of those tiny little servo motors, but a heavy duty one. This is a Toyota Hilux uh, wiper motor. We've got a 45 amp um, uh, H-bridge over there. You've got a universal steering link here. This motor could probably steer up to about a 25 or a 30 horsepower motor, no problem. Uh, you've got your power supply on the front there. It's a little Discover. 33 amp hour, what an absolutely phenomenal little battery. Uh, I've got this housing here to protect all the electronics and everything. Everything's pretty much sealed off, but it's really just a shield for everything. Inside there, you see it's a little Pee Wee 50 tank. I don't know if you can see that. It's an old Pee Wee 50 tank. Uh, it's got a little pipe off the top here. That pipe goes into a little mini compressor. I don't know if you can see that. There's a tiny little compressor inside there. And the reason why we've got that is because for the fuel, this thing does not have, um, the little 2.5 horsepower motor does not have a fuel pump. And, the, and that fuel tank is too low to feed up to the uh, motor. So we have to compress the air inside that tank to force the fuel into the motor. And that was a little bit of a mission getting there, let me tell you. And last of all, from inside the boat, you've got that there. That's my old uh, iPhone 5. Uh, the telemetry, that is how I can monitor where the boat is. There is telemetry that you can hook up to tablets and all that type of things, but I can tell you now, all the frequencies they use for telemetry is great for the air, but it's terrible for water. So I use an app called Find My Phone, and I can monitor where the boat is anywhere on the planet right from there and let me tell you i've needed a couple i've needed it a couple of times it's running to some hyacinth where it was not visible at all and right there deep in the hyacinth i found it using my trusty find my phone then it's got a usb link here to the uh, flight controller over there and that seals off with a little cap that you see down there so that i'm on the water it doesn't get wet and then I use ground control software. So if you look at this ground control software here, we're now going to connect. And hopefully it connects. Sometimes we have some weird days where it doesn't connect. Heading to waypoint home. Altitude is zero. Control. Ground speed is zero. Let's find our location. Mode here change we are. to manual. So what we do now is we go to our flight plan. We're going to um, load a waypoint file, something that I, that I created last night. This is a section, this was three. A reset, no, we're not gonna reset any in there. There's our flight plan, that's what we're doing today. That's what the little boat's gonna be, be covering. This is our Heading last to autonomous off. section Altitude is zero. today. Ground speed uh, is zero. We now need to send this information to the unit so we say write waypoints and that's now going to write the waypoints to the flight controller over there okay that should be done and then we say okay we're going to disconnect because everything's loaded and we can close that let's go back to our flight data there we go and we can shut that down and yeah guys I think that's basically it it then goes and it does its thing uh, when it gets to the end of its uh, set course uh, it goes into a loiter mode which is it just does a little circle around and around at idle speed um, yeah the only thing that I haven't shown you obviously is the uh, is the motor going on okay this is us um, we're heading off to our first spot now uh, she's obviously under manual mode on the radio, so I'm controlling her slightly here. And we're off to our first spot.
morning everybody we are on I think it's day five at the moment and uh, yeah we've actually done very very well uh, we had a real uh, bush bush fell type of uh, storm last night with a lot of rain which was awesome so yeah let's see how it goes goes today as you can see the charts are doing well We've actually done a large section of, of the dam already, but uh, let's see. Yeah, Ruda copies. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And what a morning. And sometimes you forget to buy extra wood and fire lighters. So you make a plan and you get some wood, but you've got to use the old primer stuff. Got my bloody firelight. The old handy primer station. I don't know how safe that is, but anyway, we'll take it from there. Unfortunately, the weather looks a little bit rough, but we're going to see how it goes. Uh, mapping work, we, we've had a very good day, we covered a lot of water. We're going to see what happens today. Uh, this wind is not in our favor, unfortunately. We might have to abort this. And this poor little guy, he was stuck in a net with just his head sticking out. Well, little guy, I never thought you were going to make it. I really and truly didn't. We met under the most dire of circumstances. But it's time for you to go make. Yes. Yeah. 